they were the games that drove us mad in the 1980s. But for Demis Hassabis, it wasn't about wasting a few hours down at the arcade. His fascination with electronic games and the mathematical intricacies of chess and poker were a window on a world of new possibilities. Artificial intelligence, the ability of computers to learn. Do you remember this? The computer Deep Blue has tonight triumphed over the world chess champion Garry Kasparov. It's the first time a machine has defeated a reigning world champion in a classical chess match. In the 90s when IBM built Deep Blue and they used it to, uh, you know, the machine was able to beat Garry Kasparov, the human world chess champion. I think that was a kind of watershed moment uh, in terms of, you know, showing that machines, if they are programmed in a specific way, they could be better than a uh, human at an intellectual pursuit, but only in one narrow area. So the thing I always found quite amusing about, say, Deep Blue was that, of course, it can play chess to human world champion standard, but it can't, for example, play noughts and crosses. Demis's focus is on the next generation of thinking computers. It's Deep Blue Plus. Artificial intelligence is the science of um, making machines smart. Um, but there are two ways of sort of achieving that. One is by pre-programming solutions directly into the machine. So the machine is um, just sort of executes that solution directly. Um, the second way of doing artificial intelligence is to actually imbue the machine with the ability to learn. Um, and then in that case, the artificial intelligence algorithms learn for themselves how to do things directly from experiences and data. We use computer games as a, as a testing platform for the intelligence because um, games obviously were designed to be challenging for humans. Yep. Um, they involve uh, quite complex perceptual information. So in this case, we're using classic Atari 8-bit games um, back from the 70s and 80s. And so what I'll show you here is the first half of the video um, is the machine before training. So this is literally the first time um, the machine has ever seen this data stream. And it's controlling the green rocket here. And, it's, and the object of the game is to shoot these space invaders. And you can see it's losing its three lives immediately. Um, so it's, it's basically terrible at the game, um, as you would expect. Now, after training, this is like overnight. We leave it playing the game um, overnight on a normal com computer, so for about eight hours. You come back in the morning, and now it's superhuman level. So now the machine can play Space Invaders better than any human can. Um, every bullet um, it fires it hits something. Um, it's learned that the mothership at the top of the screen is worth the most amount of points. So it does incredibly accurate shots to, to hit those. Um, even, even can predict ahead of time. Uh, it's modeled the world, the game world, so well it knows where the Space Invaders will be ahead of time. So as the Space Invaders speed up, when you get less of them on the screen, it does it fires the final shot as a kind of predictive shot of where the final Space Invader will be in a few seconds' time. Once computers stop simply following a pre-programmed route and start, well, thinking, it could mean greater understanding in a world now deluged with data. Aspects of this kind of learning technology, um, some of it's called deep learning, is already being used across a wide variety of um, applications that we use every day. You know, actually be able to do things like search your photo album for particular images, let's say of Paris, um, and you just type that in and it works out what um, those images should have in them, like the Eiffel Tower. Um, and it can recognize that not from sort of being those photos being tagged with those keywords, but actually from the actual photo contents itself. So I think the kinds of things that we'll start seeing um, in the next 5, 10, 15 years uh, are things like, um, you know, maybe household robots that help uh, that help sort of clean up around the house or do household chores, um, maybe care for the elderly. Um, I think we'll have things like, we're already starting to see things like self-driving cars. So I think the entire transport system may be revolutionized by um, automated cars and on a kind of, some kind of automated system. I think um, the thing I'm most excited about is, is how science might change. You know, you talk about things like macroeconomics, climate change, disease, um, even things like energy. Um, you know, the science of all of these things comes down to masses of information and crunching masses of information. It's too much for, you know, any group of humans, even very smart human scientists to, to fully understand. We're probably missing things. So, um, you know, I think we need um, aids like artificial intelligence technology to help us make sense of and make better use of all of this data um, for the good of society. Hang on. Computers that start thinking for themselves hasn't Demis seen Terminator? Some academics argue that artificial intelligence could make us slaves of the very computer technology we thought would help us. I think a lot of Hollywood science fiction has covered 
the obvious dystopian sort of endpoints. And, you know, I think it's within our power and our ability to make sure that those things, uh, you know, this kind of technology in, say, 20, 30 years time doesn't get used for things like military purposes. We made an agreement with Google when we came in and Google doesn't do military things. And actually this technology will never be used for military or intelligence purposes. So how can, we, you, we do, how can you guarantee that, Dennis? I think like any technology, you know, the technology itself is neutral, but it, it, it has the capability for, you know, great good and also for harm if we use it incorrectly. So I think at some point, certainly when we come to thinking about uh, any, any type of military use of this. So I can categorically say that we're not going to do that. But of course, as you say, that doesn't guarantee anyone else won't. I think Google are very, you know, are generally speaking, a very responsible company. And that's one of the reasons um, that we decided to team up with them with this kind of technology. And actually, a, an obvious example of their of how much thought they put into this is, you know, they agree with our suggestion that we needed to set up a, some kind of advisory council to to think about the ethics of um, of this kind of technology as it grows. 400 million pounds is certainly a lot to pay for a business, DeepMind, that has yet to reveal to the outside world what it is actually doing for Google. Improving the intelligence of search is one of the first projects. How far artificial intelligence can go after that will be very much down to where Demis goes next.